In this video, we're going to look at two ways of representing fractions that are larger than 1, so that's as improper fractions or as mixed numbers, and we're going to look at how you convert between the two representations. So we'll start off looking at what an improper fraction is and how you change that into a mixed number. So an improper fraction is one with its numerator larger than its denominator. For example, the fraction 15 over 4, which is the same as 15 quarters or 15 lots of a quarter, is an improper fraction because the numerator, 15, is larger than the denominator, 4. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just draw a diagram of that, so I'm going to draw 15 quarters out. So there's 4, 8, 12, 15 quarters all together and you can see I haven't just put these out randomly I've grouped them in a particular way so I've got 15 quarters all together but I need to remember that 4 quarters makes one whole one so you can see here I've grouped these into whole amounts so if we look at the orange block we've got 4 quarters all together that's one whole one in the blue block we've got another four quarters so that's got us to two whole ones and then the yellow block we've got another lot of four quarters that's got us to three whole ones I've then got three quarters left over so altogether there I've got three whole ones and three quarters so I could write fifteen quarters as three and three quarters this representation is what's known as a mixed number I've got a whole number amount there, three whole ones, and then I've got a fraction amount, a proper fraction this time, with the numerator smaller than the denominator, of three quarters. Let's have a look at another one. So what about 13 thirds? So 13 over 3, 13 thirds, or 13 lots of a third. And again, this is an improper fraction because the numerator, 13, is larger than the denominator, 3. So let's draw them out again. So I've got 3, 6, 9, 12, and one more makes 13 thirds. And again, you can see I've grouped them because I know that 3 thirds makes one whole. So if I look at what I've got here, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 whole ones and then one third left over. So I'd write 13 thirds as four whole ones and then one third. So I've changed my improper fraction with a numerator bigger than the denominator to a mixed number with a whole number and then a proper fraction afterwards. Now it's okay to do these by drawing diagrams, but you might think after a while, well, is there a shorter way of doing it? Well, there is. Let's have a look at those two examples and see if we can work out a quicker way. So we've just looked at 15 quarters being the same as 3 and 3 quarters. Don't worry about the colour coding for now. That will all become apparent in a minute. So 15 quarters is the same as saying 15 divided by 4. Okay, so I've got my top number here, 15, divided by my bottom number 4. So when we're doing a division, we can think about that as saying how many lots of something go into the number. So I can think about 15 divided by 4 as how many lots of 4 go into 15. Well, if I go through my 4 times table, if I go 4, 8, 12, I can work out that we can get three lots of four into fifteen okay so that's where I get my whole number part from you can see I've coded it in red so because I can get three lots of four into fifteen I know that my whole number part is three we've then got to think about what we've got left over so we've managed to get to twelve but we had fifteen originally so I've got three that I can't share out Okay, so I've got a remainder of 3 for that division. So you can see here that that 3 there gives us the numerator of the fraction. 
and the denominator stays the same all the way through but you can think about it as saying well in the calculation I was dividing by 4 so my remainder must be in quarters. Let's have a look at our other example. So we had 13 over 3 was the same as 4 and 1 third. So again 13 over 3 or means 13 divided by 3. How many lots of 3 go into 13? We'll count them up. We'll go 3, 6, 9, 12. We can get 4 lots of 3 into 13. So my whole number part is 4. So 4 lots of 3 gives me 12. I had 13 to divide, so I've got a remainder of 1. So my remainder of 1 is the numerator of the fraction part. And originally I was dividing by 3, so the denominator stays as thirds. When you're changing from an improper fraction to a mixed number or vice versa, the denominator never changes. All we're doing is we're changing between having a numerator larger than 1 and then writing that as a whole number part and a smaller fraction part. So if we can change improper to mixed, we should be able to go the other way. We should be able to change mixed to improper. So let's have a look at that now. So a mixed number, we've talked about that a minute ago, it's got a whole number part. You might sometimes see the word integer used instead of whole number and a fraction part. And that fraction part is going to be smaller than one. So we'll have a look at changing two and two thirds, which is two wholes and two thirds, into an improper fraction. So we'll look at it with a diagram first. So two and two thirds, I've got two whole ones there and then two thirds. So we can see again we've got two whole ones and then two thirds. But I also know that one whole one is the same as three thirds. So I can split each of those whole ones into thirds. And you can see all together there, I've now got three, six, and then with these two here, eight thirds all together. So I can write two and two thirds as eight thirds. Right, now let's see if we can do that one without drawing a diagram. So I've got two and two thirds, and we've just shown that that's eight thirds using our diagram. But can I kind of reason it out a different way? Well, I know there are three thirds in one. So in two whole ones, which is what I've got here, there must be two lots of three, so there must be six thirds altogether. I've also got an extra two thirds from my numerator. So altogether, I've got two lots of three thirds from my whole number part, and then two thirds from the numerator of the fraction, which gives me eight thirds altogether. And you can actually shorten this even further. What I've actually done here to get my whole number contribution, I can say I've multiplied my denominator, 3, by the whole number part, 2, which gives me 6. And then I've added on the numerator of the fraction to give me 8 thirds altogether. So that's a really short way of doing it. OK, let's have a look at another one. I'm going to show you now that 3 and 5 sixths is the same as 23 over 6. So same sort of reasoning as before. There are 6 sixths in 1. So in 3 whole ones I'm going to have 3 lots of 6, so 18 sixths altogether. So again I'm multiplying the denominator by the whole number part to give me how many sixths I've got in my whole number part. I've then got five extra sixths on the top from my numerator, so I'm adding that on to my 18 to give me 23 sixths altogether. 
You might find it useful to do some of these drawing diagrams first of all, but you'll find once you've got used to the ideas, you can move very quickly between mixed numbers and improper fractions, and it's a very useful skill to have to be able to do a lot of other work with fractions. If you want to see how this could be used in other problems, have a look at the other videos in the fractions playlist. Thanks for watching.